Hey, hey, I got a really funny joke. You want to hear it? Uh, sure. Okay, okay. Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Pumpkin. Pumpkin who? I'm so pumpkin excited for this tutorial, man! <sighs> Larry, you gotta get some new jokes, man. But I, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty funny. No, no, Larry, it, it wasn't funny. It, it just, it, no, it wasn't funny. Okay. I'm a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl Amanda, the buzz artist. Welcome back to my channel. And besides telling really bad pumpkin jokes that even make four-year-olds cringe, we got another awesome pumpkin tutorial coming our way. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the steps that I did to make an assortment of white pumpkins and a orange pumpkin sitting on top of all those white pumpkins. It's cute, it's fall, it's Halloween-y, it's all those things that you want, all wrapped up in a cinnamon-flavored pumpkin spiced latte. So with that being said, let's get started. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood voiceover speaking. All right, y'all, here's how it's gonna go down. This is a sped up version of a full length tutorial that I actually have on my website. So if you wanna see the full tutorial of how I did this step-by-step, -step, be sure to check out that link in the description below. But in the meanwhile, I wanted to give you the gist of what is happening here in this painting. So I grab an 11 by 14 acrylic pad, tape it down to the table, and I grab a few primary colors, including an ultramarine blue, a cerulean blue, a medium yellow, a red, and a white. No black required here, people, because we have blues, and those will definitely help us make those nice darker colors that we're looking for. So my first step here is I grab a half inch flat wash brush. So I decided to go and veer away from my three quarter inch flat wash brush that I usually go with. And I decide to mix a combination of cerulean, of cerulean blue, yellow, and a little bit of red to make a nice brown color. Water it down enough with a little bit of water on my brush. And then I just do a nice wash effect in the background here, kind of working the brush on the side so I can get that nice sweeping background. And once I have that and it's all nicely dried and ready to go, I then make a nice pale blue color to make my white pumpkins. Now this might sound super counterintuitive because you're like, yo, Amanda, these are white pumpkins. Why are you painting them the pale blue? Well, my queen bees, this is what we like to call tones. When we're dealing with pumpkins, and especially with any sort of thing that you're painting, you want to think about the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones of that particular piece that you're working with. And once you understand what those colors are, you're going to want to make them layer by layer. So in this case here, a pale blue was the shadows or the, uh, the mid-tones that I did actually pick up on these white pumpkins that I was referring to. So I decided to just use that color with my flat wash brush to um, create the pumpkin shapes that we see here today. Now, for those of you that are freaking out about pumpkin shapes and are wondering how in the heck do you make a pumpkin, really all it is is the letter C that is done over and over and over again. Pumpkins have ridges, right? <laughs> it's almost like the onions have layers, pumpkins have ridges. And uh, ridges of these pumpkins all form a kind of C shape that emanate from a center point. And so what I would do is I would take my brush, start at the center point, and depending on if the pumpkin was tilted or standing up straight, that center point would shift either right left or center and that would emanate all of those brush strokes from that center point that I choose and it always makes that C shape. And really once you kind of get the hang of making a pumpkin shape using that technique, it really becomes very very easy and simple to do and actually becomes very therapeutic. I really had a lot of good times just playing around with these shapes here. And then what really got interesting was when I added the highlights, AKA the, uh, the really white portions of our white pumpkins. Duh. <laughs> but I, I was trying to think about, okay, the light is shining on these pumpkins. Where am I going to see light reflecting off of these pumpkins? So that's really what I had in mind when I was painting these uh, white portions of the pumpkins here. I kind of thought about, okay, where is the light going to be directly hitting? That's going to be the highlights. That's going to be like the direct color of these pumpkins that we're going to be seeing. And I basically followed the same steps that I did when it came to actually making the pumpkin forms, which is those C shapes. 
it really is very repetitive once you kind of get the the hang of it and plus i made sure not to like take a lot of paint on my brush and instead do a very like quick dry brush technique and by doing that i was able to get these nice subtle blends on my pumpkin ridges and that's really what you're trying to go for when you're making a painting that's kind of like this it's less cartoony and looks a bit more real is you're playing around with different tones and uh working with multiple layers and as you can see here i then decided to add in more of a shadow on places where the pumpkins overlapped one another because again we're talking realism here we're talking um more tonal values right so once i kind of was satisfied with all of my white pumpkins it was now time to place in the papa the papa king of pumpkins we got here mr orange pumpkin he's the center of the show he is the focus point and he is like a nice bright orange color. He's actually a little bit more on the red side of orange and uh, I did this on purpose. Again, it's to establish a nice mid-tone to almost veering on a shadow. I wanted to do that first before I went ahead and started adding my more my more highlighted colors that I'm doing here. So I, I basically just take that same color, add white to it, and then just again continue doing a nice dry brush technique of adding those ridges on our pumpkin. And oh my goodness, it really starts coming to life after a while. It went from looking like a tomato to actually looking like a cute little orange pumpkin. And again, I just keep layering, 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 layering. A lot of beginners think that, oh, you just have to do this once and it's perfect on the, on the get-go. No. When it comes to acrylic painting or painting in general, it's all about layering and layering of colors. And whatever colors show up underneath is going to help create that overall um, aesthetic and tone value of this pump of like whatever it is you're painting in this case our pumpkin um, I'm in love with how this actually came out because I added white highlights to really accentuate the fact that this is like a pumpkin of varieties of shades and colors it really just it really adds more dimension to it after all and then I decided hey we got to put some stems on these pumpkins because girl girl need a hat you know what I'm saying so I decided to add a nice very vibrant green stem to the orange pumpkin along with a few little highlights that I added basically a little bit of white to that green to get those pops of color and then just making a simple brown color, which again, we just did cerulean blue, mid yellow and red. I went ahead and created some more stems of our different white pumpkins. And again, I didn't go with a green stem for the rest. I wanted that differentiation. I wanted to show the contrast of that really cute orange pumpkin offset against the the backdrop of these white pumpkins it's a really cool like little contrast project it's a really great way to learn about tonal values and plus just to have a little bit of fun right and you know i added a little bit of extra details to the stems just to add a little bit more of that like in intrigue that more realistic kind of look to it because hey it's pumpkins you can't go wrong with pumpkins and just adding a little touch of realism and then just to kind of put the icing on the cake here and make it not so realistic, I added some little like stars and sparkles on top, just using a paintbrush and some watered down white titanium. And it created this really cute, like speckled looking pumpkin scene. So that was really all there was to it. If you are interested in getting the full tutorial that walks you step by step exactly how to do this, you can go ahead and check that link in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And my queen bees was our tutorial if you enjoyed this please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel hit that like button you know what to do so that you can see more videos like this from me to you in the future tell me what size pumpkin do you usually like to get every halloween do you like small pumpkins do you like medium pumpkins or the real big ones comment below let me know and remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your art i'll see you all next time bye